And I hold true to the one who breaks my fall and lifts me time and time again. Oh my God, you're so good. You never give up. You never give up on me. Oh, what joy I found because of your love, because of your love for me. Oh my God, you're so good. You never give up. You never give up on me. Oh, what joy I found because of your love, because of your love for me. Hey. This freedom purchased by the highest price, this grace out. the power of sacrifice from death to now raised to life again hey. oh my god you're so good you never give up you never give up on me oh what joy i found because of your love because of your love for me oh my god so good you never give up you never give up on me oh what joy i found because of your love because of your love for me I'm not a slave. I'm not a slave to sin. You are a good. There we were Christ to rise in your freedom. You are good. You make a promise, Jesus, you keep it. You are good. I praise your name as long as I'm breathing. Cause you're good. I'm not a slave to sin, so I'm singing. You are good. Heavy with Christ to rise in your freedom. You are good. Cause you make a promise, Jesus, you keep it. You are good. So I praise your name as long as I'm breathing. Cause you're good. Oh my God, you're so good. You never give up. You never give up on me. Oh, we'll try it. Because of your love for me, oh my God, so you're good. so good. Never give up on me, oh what joy I found. Because of your love, because of your love for me, oh what joy I found. Because of your love, because of your love for me, oh my God, so good. You never give up, you never give up on me, oh what joy I found. Because of your love, because of your love for me, oh my God, so good. You never give up, you never give up on me, oh what joy I found. Because of your love, because of your love for me, oh my God, so good. You never give up, you never give up on me, oh what joy I found. Because of your love, because of your love for me. Yeah. I'm not a slave to sin, so I'm singing. You are good. I was very with Christ to rise in your freedom. You are good. But you make a promise, Jesus, you keep it. You are good. So I praise your name as long as I'm breathing. You are good. Good morning, Word Alive. How's everybody doing today? If I say cold. <laughs> we got something new to complain about. Now it's getting cold. <laughs> it was good. I slept good. But uh, if y'all want to stand up this morning here, we're going to get ready to worship the Lord. But no, how many know that though the seasons may change, God never does? Amen. Thank you. All throughout my history, your faithfulness has walked beside me. The 
winter storms made way for spring in every season from way around the standing i've seen the evidence of your goodness all over my life all over my life i've seen promises and fulfillment all over my life all over my life help me remember help me remember when i'm weak the fear will come the fear will leave you leave my heart to victory you are my strength and you always will be hey i've seen the evidence of your goodness all over my life all over my life i've seen promises in fulfillment all over my life all over my life see the cross to the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sin rolled away because of you, oh Jesus. Sing it again, come on. I see the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sin rolled away because of you, oh Jesus. Oh, hey, I've seen evidence of your goodness Lord all over my life all over my life I've seen promises in fulfillment all over my life all over my life sing it again I've seen it I've seen the evidence of your goodness all over my life all over my life promises i've seen your promises in fulfillment all over my life all over my life so why should i fear so why should i fear the evidence is here sing the song so why should i fear the evidence is here Woo! amen <laughs> good thank you father man he's alive in us He's coming on the clouds, kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break, and hook and hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Yeah, every knee will bow before him. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, 
The Lion of Judah is roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow. Sing it out, church. Our God. Our God is the Lamb. The Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. And the blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? You are Lord. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Can't stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, yeah, Lion of Judah, roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Yeah. Our God is the Lamb. The Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Glory to God. The Bible says, Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me, and I will answer, and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. One translation says, I'll show you great and hidden things that you don't know about. We can call on God who knows everything. He's a genius. The Holy Spirit is a genius. So let's call on him today, whatever your dilemma, whatever your situation, ask of him, and he'll answer. Nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free And my shame is undone In your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come fly this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Nothing worth more. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Here in your presence, oh Lord. I've tasted. Sweetest of love, when 
Become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Oh, oh, oh. Holy Spirit, Come on. you are welcome. Come flood. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God. time holy spirit holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts what we need to be overcome by your presence grace today. You know, grace is God's grip on you. Faith is your grip on God. How many know that God's grip on you is greater than your grip on God? Thank God it is. So reach up right to now and just say, Lord, I receive your grace today. I need your grace, oh God. The Bible says, let your heart be established in grace. Thank God we're saved by grace through faith. Lord, we receive your grace, your undeserved, unmerited favor, your power, your glory on our behalf, even though we don't deserve it, Father. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God's pouring his grace right now by way of miracles and healings right now. Just receive it in Jesus' name. He wants to do something miraculous in your life. Daniel 11.32 says, they who know their God, those who know their God will be strong and what? Do exploits. Hallelujah. So right now, receive His grace for your life. Maybe it's grace to go lay hands on a relative. 
or someone that's down and out, or someone that speak a word to someone in season that they might be healed and restored and delivered. Whatever it is, receive His grace today. There's grace in your life. Grace, the Bible says concerning the apostles, that there was great grace upon them, and miracles were done through them. So receive His grace to impart miracles to someone. In Jesus' name. Jesus paid it all. And I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all. We need you, Lord. Jesus paid it all, all to Him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, He washed it white as snow. Lord, indeed, 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 I find thy power and thine love can't change the leper spots and melt the heart of sin. Jesus paid, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. He washed away all my sin and all my shame. And when before the throne, Thy power complete. Jesus died my soul to save. My lips shall still read. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He Washed it white as snow, sin had left. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as he washed it. He washed it white as snow. Yes, you did. He washed it white as snow. Yes, you did, Lord. Oh, we rejoice in our redemption today, Lord, yeah. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Raise this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead Jesus Jesus One more time sing it and oh praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the 
debtor. Praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Jesus, just thank him this morning. He paid a debt we couldn't pay. Oh, Jesus, for you and me, his love held him there. Yes, Lord, come on, thank him for it. Thank him that he said, I'll be merciful to your unrighteousness and your sins and your iniquities. I will remember no more. Oh, thank God. And there's another one that says, wherefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with our God. We've been justified. Means he took your shame, took your guilt, made justified, just as if I had never sinned. Oh, thank you. That's the power in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Sing it with me. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Let's sing thank him for the blood now. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. I thank him for the blood of Jesus. Yes, I thank you for the blood of Jesus. Yes, it washes white as snow. One more time. Let's sing it tonight now. Well, I thank you for the blood of Jesus. Yes, I thank you for the blood of Jesus. Yes, I thank you for the blood of Jesus. Well, it washes white as Some of you in here have been condemning yourself over things that have happened 20, 30 years ago. I don't know who that is today, but God is setting you free from it right now because you have faith in the blood of Jesus. Romans 3.25 talks about having faith in His blood. So whenever you begin to condemn yourself, what you need to do is tell the devil, just, Lord, or devil, see my attorney. <laughs> Talk to my attorney. Jesus is your advocate, your attorney. He's the one that has justified you and made you just as if you'd never sinned. Oh, thank God. Come on, let's praise him for it today. Thank him for the blood. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Well, go ahead and uh, give someone a virtual fist bump there, and you can be seated. Good to see all of you today. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, this is a big weekend. We're going to be, um, well, first of all, let me do this. Let me pass this out. We pass these out on Wednesday night. Ushers, if you could help me with this. Um, this is for married couples. We want you to be sure to meet, meet one another's needs because uh, that's what God would want, right? And so the, on here we have from, uh, this is from uh, Stephen Scott to married couples. So, all right. Sure, and you can pass those out, and we've got lots of pass outs for you today, but we'll get to those in a minute. So, glory to God. Part of our vision today is we want to mobilize the troops uh, for Operation Saturation, which is uh, passing out tracts, announcement sheets, and flyers, etc., to whomever you can, wherever you can, in this locale and in this region. We want to saturate this area with the Word of God. We want every person to finish strong, too, in these difficult times, in these last days. We don't want you to finish weak. You know, the Bible tells us, uh, P- Jesus said to Peter, he said, Peter, uh, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. Do you ever feel a little bit like you're being sifted? You know, like shredded wheat? <laughs> I remember I went one time to uh, hit some golf balls. And I went to this machine at the place where you hit the golf balls, and this big machine, had you could put on $5, and you could get 25 golf balls, okay? So I got my $5 bill out, and you know how, how you have to unwrinkle the $5 bill before you stick it in the machine, 
to get these golf balls. So I spent all this time unwrinkling the $5 bill, stuck it in the machine, and forgot to put the basket under the chute. And so I had 25 golf balls going everywhere, and I'm trying to <laughs> get those golf balls, you know, and <laughs> felt a little stupid, and the girls that, that working there were laughing. They had a good time with that one. But did you ever feel a little bit like you're trying to catch all these golf balls in life, you know, and we're being sifted? But the good thing that Jesus said about that is that Satan has desired to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. Isn't that wonderful? He's prayed for you that your faith will not fail. How many of you know Jesus' prayers get answered? So he's prayed for you, and he's ever living in heaven to intercede for you at the throne of, the God, of God, and so you're going to make it. Everybody say, I'm going to make it. I'm going to finish strong. Amen. Why? Because Jesus has prayed for us, hasn't he? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I'll get to preaching there. I should do the announcements here. But anyhow, be sure to vote because that's very important. And uh, be sure to vote because if you don't vote, you've already voted for the other team, the wrong side, okay, if you don't vote. So be sure to do this. But by the way, we'll go ahead and dismiss the youth right now. They can go to their various places they're supposed to go, the, the teenagers and so forth. Uh, we'll let you be dismissed there. And uh, so, we're going to go ahead and give this morning in Ephesians, no, I'm sorry, Galatians 6.10 tells us this. Good scripture in Galatians 6.10. Galatians 6.10 says this. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men especially unto them who are of the household of faith. In other words, we're to do good to people in the world, but don't forget the household of faith, and even especially start there with those who have needs in the household of faith. And then we project on out in the mission field, and the Bible says we're honoring God with our substance and with the first fruits of our increase. And so he says, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. Why? So that there may be meat or provision in my house. So as, there's, as we sow, there's provision in the house for missions and sowing out. There's meat or provision for sowing to various needs. All right? So let's do that this morning. Ushers, if you would, go ahead and pass out the uh, sheets on, or the uh, envelopes. And you can mark your envelopes as how you would like to give. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Well, the Bible says in Isaiah 40, verse 10, His reward is with Him. I like that. His reward is with Him. You know, He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And so as we seek, seek God, He says, yeah, I'm going to reward you. And that doesn't mean just with heaven. That means in this life as well, doesn't it? Amen. He says, I will command the blessing in your storehouses. Amen. And I will give you the power to get wealth. Why? That, that he might establish his covenant in the earth. So there's a reward for it. Okay, ushers, if you would go ahead and, uh, well, let's go ahead and pray over the offering first of all. Rhonda, would you do that for us? Thank you, Lord. Dear sweet heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this glorious fall day, Father. And we thank you for the bountiful harvest that's going to come in your name, Father. We thank you for that. As we tithe and offer today, we give cheerfully unto that cause, Father, and all your causes, unto your kingdom, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go ahead and give as unto the Lord. Prodigals come home, the helpless find hope. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Prison doors swing wide, the dead come to life. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Yeah. Miracles take place, the cynical find faith. Love is breaking through. When the Father's in the room, yeah. Jericho walls are quaking, strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room, yeah. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, here in the Father. Check your shame at the door. You said you welcome 
anymore. Ooh, 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 ooh. You're in the Father's house. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Lay your burdens down. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Here in the Father's house. Check your shame at the door. Cause it ain't welcome anymore. Father's house. Amen. Praise him that you're in the Father's house. Oh, it's a house that lifts up Jesus. It's a house where his name is. It's a house of corporate worship and anointing where people gather together to give him honor and glory and praise. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify you today. You're awesome, Lord. Oh, right now, touch that one, Father, that's battling depression or oppression, whether they're at home, on the internet there, or wherever it might be, Lord, we thank you that you've come to set the captives free. You've come to give us a garment of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, come on, let's just lift our hands and praise him one more time. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise, Father. Thank you for it. That one that needs healing in their body right now, just receive it in Jesus' name. He's a miracle-working Jesus. He did it in Acts chapter 3 with the man at the gate, beautiful. And he'll do it today, too, because he's the same yesterday and today and forever. <laughs> Glory to God. So receive your restoration, your healing. Thank you, Lord. Deliverance from paranoia. Deliverance from schizophrenia. That's right. Everything that's of the enemy. Jesus came with his anointing to set the captives free, open blinded eyes, open prison doors, and preach the gospel, the good news. Thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Good, good to see you today. Ushers, could I have, have you help me one more time? Uh, could you pass these out? These are, some vo these are uh, just a, a good article about voting. It's called, uh, it's from Intercessors for America, and it's about voting your values, voting your Christian values. Anybody else? Yeah. Rick, thank you, brother. So be sure to take one of these, and listen, maybe I can have a few more ushers, because I got something else I want to give you today, too. First of all, let me say, while they're passing those out, we just want to say uh, to, all right, thank you, brother. There we go. In fact, if you have some other ushers, you, you, okay, we're good. We're good. Uh, by the way, speaking of Bob Galeno, his, his uh, wife, his mom passed away. Uh, this was Bostanic, yeah. A mother, yeah, Bob's mother-in-law, Judy's mom. And uh, so I guess Tuesday at around 11 o'clock at, at Burry's Church will be a service. That's Route 65 down by Young's Frozen Custard Stand. So if you can get there, that would be great. Hey, listen, uh, there is a prayer effort going on in this nation. I mean, believe this is a very critical time in our country. Amen. And so you know about the, the prayer effort in Washington, D.C. We've got several options for you. Uh, where is my son, Matt? He's, he must. Okay. I wanted to ask him about something. But anyhow, we've got some options for you. If maybe you can't go to Washington, D.C. to be on the mall to go ahead and and pray down there. They're going to start, I guess they're going to gather about 9 a.m. in the morning uh, in Washington, D.C. at the Lincoln Memorial. And then I think the prayer, prayer effort starts around noon, and they're going to uh, walk down there. Hey, Matt, did we do the, uh, are we going to do that online thing on Saturday or not? Still working on it. Okay, so we'll let people know. All right, we may be able to come here probably what, noon? Okay. Okay, it's a simulcast so that you can see it right from uh, where you are here in the sanctuary, uh, what's going on in Washington, D.C. for this prayer effort. It's called the return, and it's all about people returning to God, repenting, and this nation getting back to God. And so I believe they're passing that flyer out for you right now, but uh, there's another option. So you can either go to Washington, D.C., possibly see it, uh, online here in a simulcast right here from the church, or you can go to Beaver, down to Beaver, because the Church of Living Christ is sponsoring a prayer walk 
and any church, all churches and people can be involved in this. And it starts Saturday then at 12 noon and goes to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It starts at uh, Wayne Park in Beaver. That's right along River Road there in Beaver. <clears throat> so this is very important, church, uh, right now because this is a cr critical time in our nation's history. And we need to seek God and pray because we're in an ideological crossroads in this nation. And... Uh, It'll determine whether our country survives or fails. I really believe that. This is a very critical time and critical prayer time and critical elections coming up. And God the Father said in Ezekiel twenty two thirty, he says, I sought for a man to stand in the gap, but I found none. I sought for someone who would stand in the gap and pray, and I found none. You see, God ordered everything in this earth to be such that Christians are to give him permission in a sense, or, well, because we've been given authority, he wants us to ask him. Someone said, one great prayer warrior said, nothing gets done in the earth until someone prays. Nothing gets done in the earth till someone prays. And it's kind of like when we pray, we're asking God to go ahead and do his will in this earth. And for in the United States of America. And so he's hunting for someone who would stand in the gap and pray. And an, uh, that's an intercessor. That's what the, an intercessor is someone who will go to someone in high authority on behalf of people in lesser authority. So in this case, it's intercessors going before God on behalf of this nation to pray and to stand in the gap for things to get turned around, for people to repent, for this nation to come back to God, that we would experience a spiritual renewal, a spiritual awakening in America, and that the church would be revived. Praise God. That we would come back to God's plumb line, back to the moral compass that God set in His Word for this nation. Glory to God. And so... An intercessor then is someone who stands in the gap, someone who goes to someone like God on, in authority on behalf of those of lesser authority and requests. And what we're doing is saying, God, we want to see a spiritual awakening. We want to see revival in America. We want to repent as a nation and come back to you. And so this prayer time is vitally important. Do you believe that today? And so God did the same thing. I mean, this has been going on for years uh, back in the Old Testament with Abraham, he did the same thing. You remember Abraham went before God and said, God, please don't uh, judge the righteous with the wicked and, and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So Abraham stood in the gap. And you know that story he started with 40. God, if, he, if I find 40, would you spare it? If I find 30, would you spare it? If I find 20, would you spare it? He, he, he stopped. He shouldn't have stopped. He should have kept on going. Because God probably would have spared it because there was someone as an intercessor standing in the gap on behalf of, uh, of those people in Sodom. And we know that Lot got out of Sodom. So that's what an intercessor's job is. And it says in 2 Chronicles 16, 9, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro over this whole earth. Why? To show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are sincere before him. So when we have sincere hearts, we get before God, we repent, we get on our knees, and we humble ourselves and pray, he says, and seek his face, what's going to happen? And we ask him, and if we turn from our wicked ways, he says, he will hear from heaven, he will forgive our sins, and he will heal this land. He'll show himself strong. And so we need to acknowledge our dependence upon him, ask him to intervene on our behalf, and have a repentant heart. And so we could ease, you know, we could ease up at this time because we just had the, the death of uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and we could say, wow, th this, th this will help our righteous cause uh, ultimately in the Supreme Court when we fill this vacancy. And we could just kind of ease up, but no, the battle's just begun because things are going to heat up between now and November 3rd. How many believe that today? So we must not back off. We must thrust forward, advance with a prayer offensive, glory to God. We must ask God to bring a blanket of His love upon this nation. We, must, we ask Him to bring His glory upon the cities of America. 
Amen. That people would turn to him and seek his face and begin to walk uprightly before him. Amen. And so as, a, as the Old Testament was, you know, it's the same pl- thing. Whenever the people were non-compliant or rebellious against God, what happened? Very often their enemies came as, as a thorn in their sides and, and harassed them and attacked them. And the reason was they were in rebellion. And they opened the door. Well, you and I need to comply as a nation. Our president said last night, he says, we will not take under God out of the Pledge of Allegiance with liberty and justice for us all. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. Well, we know that happy are the people whose God is the Lord. We know that when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. Amen. And so that's what we want to see. And he further stated that the caliphate has been defeated. Praise God for that. And he wants no more wars. He also mentioned last night that we have advanced technology that's greater than te- the technology of any other nation. And it has just been developed. In other words, weaponry. He says, but we don't want to use it. He says, we're tired of wars. We, don't want, we want to bring our troops back. But it is there to, as a deterrent in case we need it, right? And so I think that's a great way to let the other countries know that, hey, we're not trying to be imperialists and try to rule the world. No, we just, we just want to live at peace. And the Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> so, he did, so that, the, yeah, I just said that. Blessed are the peacemakers. That's over there in Matthew chapter 5, I believe it is. So we need to pray for our nation to repent. And uh, this, by the way, the spirit of Moloch, very often in the Old Testament, was a reason that God was uh, upset with his people because they allowed the spirit of Moloch to come in and and they actually killed babies. Well, that same spirit of Moloch is prevalent in our nation with the whole abortion industry and 61 million babies have been aborted. So we want to pray against that spirit of Moloch in America. We want to defeat that. And so that's another reason for us to get together and why this is a crucial decision because we want to see that Supreme Court seat filled with someone who will tip the scales toward pro-life. Amen? In the United States of America. A crucial decision. If we don't make the right decision, the grace of God will no longer grip this nation. Right? We need to make some good decisions. So... Let's repent, let's humble ourselves, let's ask God to intervene, and let's join in this prayer effort. You have several options there, so we'll let you know about the one, if if they're going to do the live streaming from the church here, uh, we'll let you know about that, but you got three options, and I encourage all of you, if you you can't go to D.C., get down to Beaver, and uh, do that prayer walk down in Beaver. Once again, starts at noon on Saturday on River Road at Wayne Park, all right? It's just one of those nice parks there along the river. So we need everyone to pray, even from your home, if nothing else, all right? We need a multitude of voices crying out to God corporately in intercession. So let's not be selfish. Let's think about the future generations and what's going to happen to them if, if this country goes south. Amen? Any worse than it is now, right? So let's zero in on November 3rd, the elections for God to intervene and for people to vote their Christian values. And this could be a September to remember. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, praise Him for it. Glory to God. How many want it to be a September to remember? Hey, we have a picture back there. I think we've got one little picture. This is uh, old folks uh, texting for seniors. BFF's best friends fell. Oh, uh, BTW, bring the wheelchair. TTLYL, talk to your, talk to you louder. <laughs> BYOT, bring your own teeth. LMDO, laughing my dentures out. <laughs> FWIW, forget where I was. Forgot where I was. I M H A O is my hearing aid on. <laughs> OMMR, I'm on my message recliner. Massage recliner, recliner, excuse me, R-O-F-L-A-C-G-U, rolling on the floor laughing and can't get up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Turn with me in your Bibles to Acts chapter 4 today, if you would. Acts chapter 4. 
Acts chapter 4. Some of you have been believing God for some things. And I believe that by next week this time, you're going to see some differences. I don't know who that's for, but by this time next week, you're going to see a difference. Amen. Some breakthrough. Amen. Acts chapter 4. And beginning with verse 7. Acts chapter 4, verse 7. Father, thank you for your word today, and we ask you to illuminate it in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. They brought in the two disciples and demanded, by what power or in whose name have you done this? Done what? Well, you remember after Pentecost, the disciples went to the gate beautiful, and there was a lame man there who had been lame from birth, and this man was asking alms or begging, in other words, at the gate of the temple, and Peter and John came to him. And he says, he was asking for alms, and they said, such as I have, give I, they said, silver and gold, I don't have any of that, <laughs> but such as I have, give I thee. And it says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the man received strength in his feet and ankle bones, and he got up, and he began to run and leap and praise God into the temple where the people were, and everyone saw it, and they saw this wonderful miracle that was done by Peter, or through the hands of Peter and John. And so the, the, it raised a fuss with the religious people. How many know religious people don't want to see miracles? That's right. Religious people are the frozen chosen, right? And, and they don't want to see that. But we're not religious. We have a relationship with Jesus. And so they became angry about it. And they said, uh, they said there, uh, they brought in the two disciples and they demanded, by what power or in whose name have you healed this man? Have you done this? Let's go over to, uh, oh no, let me keep continue to read there. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Leaders and elders of the nation, are we being questioned because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed in the name and power of Jesus Christ from Nazareth, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, for Jesus is the one referred to in the Scriptures where it says, the stone that you builders rejected has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else. There is no other name in all of heaven for people to call on to save them. So they just gave the glory to God. It says, by the name of Jesus was this man healed. Now go over to verse 14. But since the man who had been healed was standing right there among them, the council had nothing to say. They, um, they said, so they sent Peter and John out of the council chamber and conferred among themselves, what should we do with these men? They asked each other, we can't deny that they have done a miraculous sign and everyone in Jerusalem knows about it. But perhaps we can stop them from spreading their propaganda. We'll warn them not to speak to anyone in Jesus' name again. Wow. So they called the apostles back in and told them never again to speak or teach about Jesus. But Peter and John replied, do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? <laughs> you got a choice sometime. Are you going to obey God or are you going to obey man? Amen. And we cannot stop telling about the wonderful things we have seen and heard. The council then threatened them further, but they finally let them go because they didn't know how to punish them without starting a riot. For everyone was praising God for this miraculous sign, the healing of a man who had been lame for more than 40 years. Verse 24, then all the believers were united as they lifted up their voices in prayer. O sovereign God, creator of heaven and earth and the sea. And anyhow, they, they prayed this wonderful prayer. And part of that prayer over in verse 29 says, and now, O Lord, hear their threats and give your servant great boldness in their preaching." Give your servants great boldness in our preaching, Lord. Send your healing power. Many miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After this prayer, the building where they were meeting shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they preached God's message with boldness. 
Glory to God. Verse 20, verse 33, and the apostles gave powerful witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was upon them all. I think the King James says great grace was upon them all. What is God's grace? It's His willingness to use His power and His ability on your behalf, even though you don't deserve it. Isn't that good? His willingness to use His power and His ability on your behalf, even though you don't deserve it. God's grace, His favor was upon them. He, his power flowed through them, and people were healed. As a matter of fact, it says in uh, chapter 5 and verse 12, it says, Meanwhile, the apostles were performing many miracles, signs, and wonders among the people. And the believers were meeting regularly at the temple in the area known as Solomon's Colonnade. No one else dared to join them, though everyone had high regard for them. And more and more people believed and were brought to the Lord, crowds of both men and women. As a result of the apostles' work, sick people were brought out of the streets on beds and mats so that Peter's shadow might fall across some of them as he went by. Crowds came in from the villages around the, uh, Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those possessed with evil spirits, and they were all healed. Glory to God. Peter and John had just come out of the upper room and been filled with the Holy Spirit. And then they performed this great miracle. And verse 33 of, of chapter 4 says it this way. With great strength and ability and power. This is, I think, the Amplified Bible. With great strength, ability, and power, the apostles delivered the testimony of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace. Great grace. Everybody say great grace. great grace. That is loving kindness, favor, and goodwill rested upon them all. Glory. Great grace, favor, power rested upon them all. Is there anybody besides me that's hungry for the power of God and miracles? Huh? How many? Say it again. How many are, besides me are hungry to see the power of God, to see miracles and healings and the supernatural? How many believe this could be a September to remember for a lot of reasons? Amen. It says, by the hands of the apostles, signs and wonders were wrought among the people. But notice what preceded. It says in verse 31 that they prayed and, were, and the place was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, I thought, Pastor, that Peter and John had already been filled with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. That's right. They just needed a refilling, all right? 3,000 got saved as a result of Pentecost. Another 5,000 got saved as a result of this man's healing. It was a notable miracle, and many people believed and turned to the Lord because of it, and so they needed another refilling. How about you today? Do you need a refilling? Your car ever run out of gas and you need to get into the service station? You get refilled? People today walking around trying to live this Christian life and they're only half full. They've, they've become lukewarm. They've become complacent. But I tell you, the Holy Spirit can give you the fire of God, according to Matthew 3, 11, and you can regain that power, that zeal, that fervency of spirit so that you can stay on fire because it's not the lukewarm that are going to make it and finish strong. It's going to be the people that have the fire of God. <laughs> Isn't that right? In their bellies. People who love Jesus and are seeking Him every single day, who want more of God. I don't know about you, but that's the way I was. I just, I got to the place where I wanted more of God. I wasn't satisfied. I was born again, but I needed, I knew there was something else that I needed, and I knew there was something more. And I watched people freely worship around me, but I was as tight as a, I was as frozen chosen, you know what I mean? <laughs> Church of the frozen chosen, Right? And so, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, then when I yielded, finally yielded, man, the Scriptures came alive to me. They jumped off the page. Revelation knowledge began to come. Why? Because I had more of the teacher of the church. The Holy Spirit is the teacher of the church. He is the Spirit of truth. 
And when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, now you're ready. You're excited about what God's doing. You're excited about the Word of God and getting revelation knowledge and wanting to serve Him with all of your heart and win souls. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so they needed a refilling. You know, the Bible does talk about getting a refilling. Look over there in Titus. We mentioned this on Wednesday night. Look at the book of Titus. And uh, chapter 3. So there's a ton of people today who were once filled and need a refilling. Amen. They want to see the book of Acts miracles. Praise God. Titus chapter 3 and verse... 4 says, but after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us. We're saved by grace through faith. You can't earn salvation. All your good works, all your deeds, that doesn't get you saved. No. No. Many churches today trying to earn their way to heaven by doing a lot of good works. But all, it comes down to the fact that we must be born again. We must have a personal relationship with Jesus. We must be regenerated. And it goes on to say that right here. It says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration. When your spirit is regenerated, you receive the life and the nature of God. You're made brand new. You've been refathered. Jesus said to the religious people, you are of your father, the devil. <laughs> Woo, that's pretty strong. But he said, you need a new father. You need to have the heavenly father find this relationship with him, this up close, intimate, personal relationship with Jesus because that's what will get you to heaven and nothing else. Come on, somebody. Woody's coming next week, so... Let's try that again. Come on, somebody. <laughs> he loves to say that, doesn't he? So washing of regeneration, that means your spirit is regenerated, see? And renewing of the Holy Ghost. Oh, glory to God. We need renewing of the Holy Ghost. In other words, we need refilled once in a while. The Bible tells us to be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart unto the Lord. What does that mean? That means to get filled and stay full. That's an ongoing thing. Remain full all the time. So maybe, you, you know, I've been there too, where I just kind of, man, faith drains and drains on my love walk and everything else. And man, get me to the altar, man. I need refilling. You know what I mean? And so that's what happened with them. And when they were refilled, they spoke the word with boldness and went out and did miracles. You say, I want to see miracles. Then go ahead and get refilled today. Everybody say, refill me, Holy Spirit. I want to be filled to overflowing. Oh, with the power of the Holy Spirit. There's point four there. Anyone who is saved can be filled with the Holy Spirit if they ask. What's the requirement? Be born again and ask. Say it with me. Be born again and ask. This is a second work of grace, and we ask for it. It says in Luke chapter 11, it says, If you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, this is verse 3, how much more will God give the Holy Spirit to those who beg? To those who plead? To those who grovel? No. To those who what? Ask. All you got to do is ask. I don't know. Well, you got to ask. May I mention another one too? I don't know which point it is, but it's up there about being thirsty. Not only do you need to ask, but you need to be thirsty. If you're not thirsty, I, won't even, I don't even want to pray for you to get filled. You got to want it. Turn with me to John chapter 7. Okay? There it is, number 6. One must be thirsty for more. 
So, I'll say it again. We need constant renewings of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And church, it does produce miracles. Listen, I just wrote some of these down that we've experienced in the past. Huh? Went to the charismatic move and got involved in that and saw people delivered from depression and mental problems, emotional instability. I saw people healed of muscular disorders, back issues, neck and shoulder pain right in this church. People with leg problems, abdominal pain, bipolar condition, headache pain, people with sinus. We had a word of knowledge one time when the per person's sinus is immediately drained and the pressure left. You say, is Jesus still doing miracles today? Yes, where there's faith, where there's an atmosphere of faith and expectancy and where people are coming who know about the Spirit-filled walk because why? Because the infilling of the Holy Spirit is the open door to the supernatural. Are you excited about that? I said the baptism in the Holy Spirit is the open door to the supernatural. We saw people with an injured tailbone healed. People with lesions that they've had for 15 years. The lesions, lesions left. Not legions of demons, but legion, lesions. Okay. Pulsating foot, throbbing with pain, left. A heart condition was healed. Upper, lower back, shoulder that was locked up, and the pain left. Uh, sciatic pain left. Everybody say a September to remember. A three-year-old was healed of leukemia when our assistant pastor prayed for that three-year-old. A girl came, just a high school girl came, and, and her throat was healed. Word of knowledge for someone's digestive system, totally healed. So church, when's it happen? When there's an atmosphere of faith and expectation and receptivity, openness. People come and they're just kind of like, oh, I don't know, I'll just come and see. No, that's not expectation. That's not anticipation. Huh? No, you've heard me say before that the atmosphere of expectancy is the breeding ground for miracles, praise God. So when we come that way and we're spirit-filled, glory to God, you can be empowered to stay hot. We need a spirit-filled atmosphere like Peter and John had. They'd just been baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then they got filled. And they all got filled and spoke the word with boldness. Hallelujah to Jesus. Being filled with the Spirit of God is a miraculous experience in itself. I remember when I got filled with the Holy Ghost. And I had very little teaching on it. And I just got around these charismatic Catholic people. And it came off on me. And finally I got filled. And I remember driving down the road, speaking in tongues. And... I wanted to shut my eyes, but I had to drive, you know. But glory to God, I was just praising him in a new language. And that's turned, that made Jesus so much more real to me. And it gave me a liberty, because the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Helped me to go from just a convert to a disciple. People are just, you know, God didn't say go into all the world and make converts. He said go into all the world and make disciples. He doesn't want just converts. He wants disciples. He wants you to be skillful in the word of righteousness, Hebrews 5, 13. Amen. He wants you to grow up into him in all things and not stay a baby infant convert. Let me hear a shout, amen. amen. All right. <laughs> Glory to God. So how do we do that? We need constant renewings. We need to be regenerated, and then we need constant renewings. And let me finish. I, I said I'd turn, turn to John 7, 37. Now look at this, John 7, 37. It says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried, saying, If any man thirst, everybody say thirst. Are you thirsty today? Are you hungry? You want more of God? If you don't, he won't bother you with it. He'll just leave you right where you are. And I won't even pray for you unless you're thirsty for it. Let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. 
Rivers, rivers of living water. That's not out of my head, that's out of my spirit. You say, you're saying that without thinking? That's right, I'm just opening my mouth wide. Psalm 81, 10 says, and I will fill it. You open your mouth and you just begin to speak. And you begin to glorify God. And you begin to praise Him in a new language, see? Hallelujah. Living waters come out of your belly. And notice, I'm not taking this out of context because he says in verse 39, but this spake he of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which they that believe on him, how many believe on him? Which they that believe on him should receive. Everybody say, I should receive it. Ephesians 5 says, be filled with the Spirit. They should receive it for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. The Holy Spirit hadn't come in this Pentecostal experience yet, but it was going to come. The Holy Spirit hadn't been given yet in that Pentecostal experience. Remember, Jesus said, it's more expedient or it's better for you if I go, for if I don't go, the comforter won't come. So when he went up, the comforter came down. They were filled with the Holy Ghost in in the upper room on the day of Pentecost, see? And they were exuberant, and they were praising God. They were endued with power from on high. Praise the Lord. Why? Because they were thirsty. They that believe in them should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Well, when was he glorified? When he ascended to heaven. At his ascension, he was glorified. Jesus went up, what happened? His representative of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, came to earth. Praise God. Woo! Glory to God. And he's here today. He has not left. He's still doing acts of the apostles. It's not acts of the apostles. It's acts of the Holy Ghost. He's still doing miracles today. Why? Because Jesus is alive. He's raised from the dead. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. Woo! Glory to God. How many are thirsty? Come on, let's stand today. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let's lift our hands and praise Him. Thank you, Lord. You can receive right now. Just say, Heavenly Father, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I am asking. And I am thirsty. I desire more of you. Fill me now. I'm a born-again Christian. I love Jesus. He's my Lord. So fill me to overflowing. In Jesus' name. Now begin to praise him in a new language. That's it. If you just begin to let it come right out of your spirit. On a Monday, let it show. Sifre mamana shoko safadonga lereba kashikera bahataya. Come on, you want to see miracles? Come on, get filled. Demando lereba soto shikera baha. Musicians, everybody, singers. Come on, let's just all simande lereba soto shikera baha. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Semene kashikula bai reboro siri bahasha talamendeke. This is how you're going to make it. This is how you're going to survive in the last day. So manabeshe moraba sukulai. Yo, yeah, you're not going to be sifted as wheat. No, praise God. Jesus has prayed for you that your faith fail not. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. That's it. Glory to God. Be filled with the Spirit. Thank you, my Father. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you today for what you've done And uh, let's just pray this prayer together right now. Say, Heavenly Father, oh, Jesus is my Lord. I'm saved, washed in the blood, going to heaven. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit, a habitation of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Now go ahead and praise Him with all your heart. Give Him praise for it today. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hey, it's time to stop duct taping the Holy Ghost in a back room somewhere. It's time to let him have free course, right? And reign in our services and and see miracles. And I'll tell you, when you come Sunday for Woody Woodson, you're probably going to see some wonderful miracles take place. We always have them when Woody's here. 
In fact, God's, by the way, God's touching someone right now and setting them free from fears. That's right. Lift your hand to heaven if that's you. He's setting people free from fears right now in Jesus' name. Apprehensions, go in Jesus' name. I break the power of fear in people's lives. Go from, oh yeah, that's it. Someone on gate. Yes, thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Receive it. Oh, receive this wonderful relationship that he has for you. Glory to God. Have a great day. Let's worship him as we go. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me. Yeah. Yo, clap it out. Help us out. Be blessed.